Brad Keselowski teases upcoming RFK announcements, and NASCAR reiterates they're open to changing the playoff format. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove, the first Tuesday of the offseason, and we've got lots of news to catch up on. First, this episode is sponsored by 1821 Man Made. Right now, their entire website is 30% off through December 3rd. 1821 offers top shelf grooming goods for fans of turning left and going fast. As we head into the colder months, skin starts to dry up, hair starts to flake, get ahead of the cold by stocking up on some 1821 man-made. Their shampoo and conditioner disguised as a whiskey bottle is exactly what you need. I also love using their beard oil and everything they make smells spectacular. Head to 1821manmade.com again. Through December 3rd, their entire website is 30% off. Thanks to 1821 for sponsoring the show. Just days after winning his first NASCAR championship, Justin Allgaier is among those participating in a Goodyear tire test at Rockingham Speedway this week. NASCAR returns to the rock after roughly a decade away next April, April 2025. The Xfinity Series, the Truck Series, will be interesting to see how these Xfinity Series cars hold up on the freshly repaved Rockingham Speedway surface. The Rock may be back, but it is going to look different than it did last time stock cars race there. Just want to give y'all a fair warning. Uh, reporter Adam Stern, Sports Business Journal, tweeted out the year-end television ratings for the NASCAR Cup Series. He writes, NBC got a 1.6 rating and 2.895 million viewers for Sunday's championship race at Phoenix, roughly flat from last year, 1.62, 2.9 million, basically the same. But he notes that NASCAR finished the 2024 season averaging 2.892 million viewers per event on U.S. television, up 1% from last year. Any ratings increase is worth celebrating considering the sport's biggest races this year were all severely impacted by weather. The season opening clash at the Coliseum, which has been a big ratings win the past couple of years, was forced to run a full night early due to severe weather. Huge ratings loss. The Daytona 500, the biggest event all year, postponed to Monday. The Coca-Cola 600 was cut short by rain. And the Chicago street race was delayed by weather, cut short due to darkness for the second straight year. Considering those gargantuan television losses, To come out of the year up 1% is, in my opinion, a pretty huge win. I don't think NASCAR will ever be the cultural phenomenon it was 20 plus years ago ever again. But over the past few years, it has carved out a sizable, very steady niche. It's not the NFL. It's not the NBA. It's not competing with World Series games. But as you know, kind of that next tier of professional sports is concerned, NASCAR very much is holding its own. The fact that ratings have more or less stabilized over the past few seasons is an encouraging sign for the health of the sport. I think next year is going to be extremely interesting from a numbers standpoint because Fox and NBC will be joined by Amazon Prime, TNT. There will be fewer races on broadcast TV. There will be more cable races a handful of races exclusively on streaming. Amazon is in tens of millions of households in the U.S., but it's still new. It's especially new for stock car racing fans. Obviously, the Xfinity series will be on the CW all year long. I would not expect next year to be a huge ratings win. When NASCAR agreed to this seven-year media deal, they clearly chased the max amount of money they could get in lieu of exposure. They kind of did the exact opposite of what, for my IndyCar fans out there, the exact opposite of what IndyCar was able to negotiate. I'm not sure IndyCar got the most money they possibly could, but I think all of their races next year, right, will be on Big Fox. That's great for exposure. It's a series that desperately needs that kind of marketing. TV money makes the NASCAR industry work. So NASCAR chased the biggest bag they possibly could, not just for themselves. That money trickles down to the tracks, the team, The teams, according to court documents, will be the largest beneficiary of next year's media rights deal. Unfortunately, at least in some ways, the fans will lose. I think the audience numbers will take at least a small hit next year. I'm excited to see how Amazon and Turner hopefully innovate 
the broadcast, maybe from a content perspective, fans will actually win next year. But from an accessibility standpoint, watching races and practice and qualifying next year just got more complicated. And for most people, probably just got a little more expensive. So really encouraging TV numbers this year. Again, considering the weather complications in the spring. But next year, I think the numbers are going to look very different. Uh, Let's come back to this in a year and see how right or wrong we were. Brad Keselowski the other night posted a thread on X reflecting on the 2024 NASCAR season. And there was one post in particular I want to single out. He said, look for several official big announcements from RFK in the next two weeks. Hmm, and y'all thought this was going to be a slow off season. I think we can guess what at least one of those announcements are going to be. Driver Ryan Priest has been linked to RFK for weeks. Just a couple weeks ago, he participated in a wet weather tire test for RFK Racing. So expect one of the announcements to be Ryan Priest joining RFK in a third car. The other announcements could be that Kroger is joining as a major sponsor, as has been previously reported. Perhaps the other announcement will be that they've acquired a third charter, or maybe they're leasing a third charter from Rick Ware. RWR has still not announced their drivers for next season, which has led to some speculation there. So we'll see what those announcements turn out to be. One for sure is going to be Ryan Priest joining the team next year. I'm excited to see what Ryan Priest can do. Lord knows he's ready to get the hell out of Stuart Haas racing. <laughs> if him being excluded from that driver study group earlier in the year wasn't evidence enough, this weekend at Phoenix, he skipped the team's you know, cool down lap photo op. I ain't sure where the 41 is. 41's all pit road. See my surprise look? Yeah, for sure. And then Stuart Haas posted this video, which notably excludes Ryan Priest. So yeah, Ryan Priest is ready to put most of the last two years at Stuart Haas behind him. I'm excited to see what he can do next year. With Chase Briscoe headed to JGR, Josh Berry heading to the Wood Brothers in alliance with Team Penske, and Noah Gregson heading to the up-and-coming front row, every Stuart Haas driver, you could argue, is getting an upgrade next season. Which is huge for Ryan Priest because we've seen him win races in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series, and he's only made select starts in those series. And he's never been in a good Cup Series car. I cannot stress that enough. The last two years, Stuart Haas was not good equipment. Ryan Priest at RFK Racing next year should be a playoff contender. I don't think I would pick them to make the playoffs. If Priest does make the playoffs next year in RFK equipment, I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't be shocked. Like, I do think he's that good. He's been around long enough. He's just waiting for this kind of opportunity. So, Priest to RFK, I'm a fan of the move. I know a lot of other fans are more lukewarm or or are maybe even cynical when it comes to Ryan Priest and his potential, but you know, I'd like to see that combo and see what they can do. Anyway, we'll wait a couple weeks for those announcements. The hot topic this week is still NASCAR's championship format. Fans continue to be critical of Logano, the way Joey Logano won his third Cup Series title on Sunday. But like I've pointed out, earlier in the weekend, NASCAR leaders Steve Phelps and Steve O'Donnell admitted that they could potentially make tweaks to the NASCAR playoff format going forward. The format is the format, right? And we are always looking, if there are opportunities for us to tweak something, so be it. Format is one thing, right? But playoffs, I think we're, we're not going to go away from playoffs. We'll absolutely look at, you know, what form the playoffs take in the offseason. That was on Friday, before the Truck Xfinity and Cup Series championship races played out. Then, today, Tuesday morning, on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90, Elton Sawyer, the senior vice president of competition for NASCAR, admitted once again that the series is open to changing the format. This is some of what he said. Maybe what we have is the, the best model, but if it's not, we want to, we're open. You know, we're, we're all ears on it and we have some ideas, but we want to make sure as an industry, um, you know, we're doing the right thing uh, for our sport and the right thing to crown our champions. We have some ideas. Wow. Correct me if I'm wrong. But between the Steve's comments on Friday, Elton's comments today, this has to be the first time multiple NASCAR executives have publicly acknowledged that they could change the playoff format 
since 2016. Am I right? 2016 going into 2017, they changed the format. They added stage racing, playoff points that carry through each round. But since those changes, they've dug in their heels. These comments are the first time in a long time I've seen NASCAR leadership reflect on the format they've created. I don't think the creation of the playoffs was some sort of big mistake. Many fans will point at the playoffs and say they're largely responsible for NASCAR's decline in popularity over the last 15 years or so. And absolutely, the playoffs may have played a role. It's worth noting that ratings for the playoffs this year were up while regular season ratings were down. Again, the weather did impact this number. But I would point to a half a dozen or more factors that I think have played a larger role in the sport's decline. Changing viewership habits, the rise of streaming, more on-demand content, changing car culture, popular drivers condemning the COT in its early years, the 2008 recession, the impact on sponsorship, teams being over-reliant on corporate sponsorship, forcing driver personalities to be more watered down. Stars from the previous era, like Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart eventually retiring. I could go on and on and end. I'm not going to say the playoffs aren't a factor, but I don't think they're anywhere close to the biggest factor. Actually, if we're going to zero in on the playoffs, I think the bigger factor was the fact that for a 10-year stretch or so, NASCAR felt the need to constantly change the playoff format. Every few years, they would make small or big adjustments, and every single time it felt like they were undermining their own credibility. Why should fans take the new format seriously when NASCAR have shown they're probably going to change it in a couple of years? Now it's been roughly 11 years since the elimination-style playoffs were created, and it's been 8 years since any notable changes were made to that. The current playoff format has some flaws, so I'm encouraged that multiple NASCAR leaders have admitted they might make some changes this offseason, but I do believe any changes they make need to be fairly small. I think the bones of the current playoff format need to stay largely intact. If you watched my video yesterday, I suggested what I believe to be a very realistic playoff format proposal that keeps the playoffs because I don't think NASCAR is doing away with the playoffs anytime soon. It even keeps the elimination rounds. I think fans over the past 11 years have largely become used to the elimination style format, so it keeps that largely intact. I encourage you to go watch my video yesterday if you haven't seen it already. I appreciate the feedback on there. A lot of you guys offered additional suggestions that made a lot of sense to me. Big picture, my proposal would reward regular season consistency more by eliminating win and you're in. My proposal would award more playoff points to the regular season champion and would allow drivers to use their playoff points even in the championship four round. Another change in my proposal would get rid of the one race winner take all finale. Instead, the championship four would be three races. A larger sample size that hopefully gives us a better chance of crowning a more deserving champion, someone that the majority of fans can accept. There are a couple other small changes, like I included a wild card race as my round of 16 one race, where the bottom half of the playoff grid competes for the final round of 12 transfer spots. Again, go watch my video from yesterday. I break it all down in great detail. I think if you're going to change the playoff format, you need to keep the bones of the current format largely intact. If you completely overhaul the system like you did many times in the late 2000s and early 2010s, I think you once again risk harming what credibility the league still has. Let me know if that makes sense or if you agree slash disagree. One, one final detail I'd like to at least acknowledge. Reporter Jeff Gluck, The Athletic, did a you know informal Twitter poll this week asking fans, uh, would you rather have the current elimination style playoffs, sort of a return to the old chase era, or would you rather a full season Winston Cup style format? Most people said they wanted a chase style format over the current format, which makes sense to me. But what honestly kind of surprised me was that nearly two thirds of voters would still prefer a playoff format over the old school Winston Cup format. That honestly surprised me. And I know it's an informal Twitter poll. I'm not going to pretend this is perfectly symbolic of the entire NASCAR fan base, but after such a controversial playoff run, race manipulation at Martinsville, questions around the champion's eligibility, legitimacy, I would have expected fan support for a return to the Winston Cup style format to be at an all-time high, but no, the majority of fans want playoffs. 
I think that gives credibility to NASCAR when they say the playoffs are here to stay. I think the playoffs should stick around. Tweak them in a few ways. I've made my suggestion. But the format does not need to be completely overhauled. Most fans aren't asking for it. And if you do completely overhaul the format, you run the risk of making the same mistakes I think NASCAR made in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comment section below. I hope NASCAR is very careful about any decisions they make this offseason. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe as well if you're new to the show. It may be the offseason, but clearly there's no shortage of things to talk about. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well.